All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you, as usual, from San Diego. And today I'm joined by Magda Huala, who is in Denver, Colorado. How are you doing, Magda? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing excellent. And Magda is the Director of Marketing Strategy at Aspire IQ and a leader in community intelligence marketing. And you work hands-on with brands across a lot of industries. You've worked with people like uh, Freshly, Bed Bath & Beyond, LL Bean and Walmart. And what we wanted to talk today about was what does it mean to be an influencer and how and how does how has influencer changed in 2020 and how is it changed given the pandemic and all of that has it, it, extra layer on top so first of all before we start and why don't you baseline for people what you mean by influencer because it's an it's a word that and a term that gets bandied about a lot and i'm not sure everybody really understands what it means yeah, that's a really good place to start. So I think I'll start by taking a step back and talking about what influencer is more in the traditional sense. So probably around 2012, 2013, as social media platforms like Instagram, YouTube, and Pinterest were really taking off, uh, people began to amass large followings on these social platforms because mm -hmm. they had really interesting content, they had interesting stories to tell, they were funny, creative, experts, whatever it may be. Uh, those people rapidly became our first uh, quote unquote influencers uh, in the in the way you think about it today. But essentially an influencer is anyone that has a social media following, but most importantly, someone who has a story that resonates with their audience. You can have a ton of followers, but you know, metrics can easily be inflated, engagement rate, mm -hmm. follower count, et cetera. So really when you think about what it means to be influential, it really is someone that has a story that resonates that people take action on. That's kind so, of the traditional, yeah. yeah. Go ahead. And has that has that has that evolved at all now? In, because I mean, obviously, people are trying to become influencers, and companies are trying to become influential brands. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah. So, influencer in the traditional sense is you have a lot of followers on social media, but it has absolutely evolved. So, I'd say in the past year and a half, maybe two years, we've noticed a not so subtle shift in the market where. People are looking for individuals beyond those that are influential on social media. Because if you think about it, anyone can have influence on a brand. I have no social presence really whatsoever to talk about, but I could still have influence on a brand by recommending it to my friends or talking about it with my colleagues, whatever it may be. So we've realized that the definition of influence no longer is just someone that has a ton of followers on social media. It's someone that is valuable to a brand in a number of different ways, either through their reach on social media, because they're an avid fan and they spread word of mouth, because they're avid customers. So really modern day influencer programs and where I see influencer programs going in the future is moving beyond just vanity metrics and really thinking about who is actually going to have the biggest impact on your business from a new customer acquisition standpoint or from a um, improving customer loyalty and customer lifetime value perspective. Yeah. So when you work with brands, I presume then obviously, uh, as you say, you're moving beyond uh, the traditional kind of concept of the influencer and just the person with the big following. And to be honest, I mean, in some ways people have found, I think have got a little tired of that and find that a little vapid. Um, so how do you how do you help brands develop influencer programs that really unlock the people that you're talking about? Yeah, so it really depends upon first establishing goals with, with a brand. So if a brand is looking for, let's say, brand awareness, to them, mm -hmm. you know, that could mean a lot of different things. Brand awareness could be simply um, increasing follower count on social media. It could be improving share of voice. It could be improving brand recognition through more traditional, uh, I guess, brand list tactics. Um, but it starts with establishing what the goals are and then using, you know, a tool like Aspire IQ where we're able to not only help you identify people that are social media influential, but evaluate your customer data, see who those repeat customers are, do full social listening, see, uh, you know, who is talking about you online that might not have tens of thousands of followers, but talk mm -hmm. about you all the time. So really, we want to help our clients uh, 
understand the tactics for why they should work with these people. That's kind of first and foremost, how do all of these different groups aid in your overall goals? And then also give them the tools to understand, okay, how do I actually find these people and how do I engage them in a way that's appropriate? For a social media influencer, you might be paying them because they create really high quality content sure. that you're then able to get the rights to and use across your marketing staff. Whereas paying a customer who's already purchasing from you would be, you know, very much inappropriate. So how do you reward those individuals that you can continue to improve their loyalty. Yeah, and I guess part of it too is then that you need to look at what are all the different touch points that your brand has because if you're putting out one message, one place, but maybe your customer service doesn't uh, act in the same way, uh, because the, there, there's other channels of influence, right? I mean, people who interact with customer service, for instance, they have a story to tell later, and that can either be a good story or a bad story. So you kind of have to take a holistic approach. Absolutely. Yeah, it's really about creating that consistent message across all touch points. And that's why I think it's important to think about an influencer program almost more as like a community engagement type program and think about the overarching message needs to be the same across all channels. Your customer service team needs to be speaking the same language that your influencer manager team with the language they're speaking. Um, and then ultimately figure out how to structure the interaction models and the, again, the reward structure so that it is appropriate for all of these different audiences. Yeah, no, absolutely. And so, how can I mean, talk about those kind of programs and things that you can do that are maybe less traditional than you know obviously there's the paying the influencer but what are some of the other things that you can do in order to you know really engage with uh, with people who could be influencers with your customers as you say it's not appropriate to pay them but there are other ways you can get them more involved and feel more connected to the brand yeah, this is a really good question. So I think that we're seeing just universally, you need to go beyond just providing product and providing payment. Really, I think the brands that are on the cutting edge of having really sophisticated programs, think about the experiences that they're providing to their community. So I think a really great example is Lululemon. They have a really, really strong community and it is all based on the experiences the brand provides, they rarely ever talk about their product. So what they do is they provide things like in-store yoga classes, they provide yoga retreats for some of their more influential members of their community that are creating high-end content. They provide a sense of belonging for a lot of individuals so that they can find like-minded people that also have you know, shared passions, shared goals, and ultimately they're, they're creating the sense of community that very much moves far beyond what you could get with just free product and payment alone because these people are very much invested in being a part of the Lululemon, uh, Lululemon community, excuse me. Um, they're a really great gold standard, I think, for creating uh, experiences for people within their community. And then I think that there are lots of other brands that do really interesting things as well. Yeti, for example, their way of rewarding people that are a part of their influence, influencer or ambassador program is they actually highlight them as kind of experts on their website. So they'll have some people that are fly fishers, some people that are downhill skiers. They'll give them the platform to tell their story and talk about their craft uh, that they otherwise wouldn't get because these individuals uh, don't necessarily have a huge following of their own. So I think that it really, you know, brands need to think about the fact that so many brands can offer payment, so many brands can offer free product. What can you do as a brand that is unique to your value prop and is something that is going to get people to want to be motivated to not only join this group, but maintain with the group and stay invested in it as, as your company grows? Yeah, and you touch on something there that I think would be interesting for people, the difference between an influencer and, say, an ambassador. Uh, mm -hmm. So how, how, do, how do brands, I mean, what is an ambassador from your point of view, and how do brands leverage ambassadors, and what's the difference between them and influencers? So an ambassador would be any individual, whether they are a social media star, an expert, and uh, you know, an industry expert, a fan, a customer, et cetera any individual that is motivated to essentially be a spokesperson, if you will, for your brand. So influencer in the traditional sense, an influencer might work with a number of different brands. You could go to their social media page and see lots of different brands that they're promoting. Whereas an ambassador, they typically have a long-term partnership with a brand. And with that comes things like exclusivity, um, you know, long-term content rights, things like that, where this individual might work with other brands, but is primarily a partner of your brand. 
The biggest benefit of doing something like an ambassador program is one, you can really lock in top talent and top rates for a longer period of time. And basically, if you think about it, someone might start with 10,000 followers on social media, you might want to start working with them. After, you know, three months, that could have grown to 50,000, 100,000. These people want to grow their social following too. So it is really right. beneficial for brands to identify these really talented, passionate individuals early on. I mm. think, oh, go ahead. No, I was going to say, and obviously, obviously then you need to choose carefully that the right ambassadors like fit the profile from your brand. And so you got to, you got to match them kind of carefully. Absolutely. Yeah. I think it's definitely worth doing kind of a test and reinvest approach work with someone for a couple of months. And if it's someone that is really passionate about your brand, tells a really great story, lock them in for, you know, as long as you're able to, whether that's six months, a year, whatever that may be. Um, but yeah, essentially, I think the, the other key difference between an influencer and an ambassador is I encourage my brands to find ambassadors that are already familiar with the brand and ideally already a fan. That really comes across in the content they create, the stories they're telling both on and offline. If it's a product that I have used for years and a brand reaches out and says, hey, do you wanna be an ambassador? Do you wanna have first access to our new products? Do you wanna be a part of this ambassador community? I would be like, absolutely, yes, I've loved you for years. And, and that really comes across. So I think that there's tactics to find people within um, your existing sphere that would be great for an ambassador program. Yeah, no, I think that's a, I think that's a great point. And, you know, especially as you say, people who've been interacting with your brand and that, because, you know, obviously if you then invest in them, they become even more enthusiastic and, and want to spread, spread the message out there. How can, so, I mean, I think it's obvious sort of for consumer brands and that, but in, in the B2B space, how can, how can companies leverage ambassadors and influencers also? So I would say this is where subject matter experts really come into play. So say you are a sales force, finding people that are really strong voices in the sales community, you can find those individuals primarily on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. Those are people that you want to partner with. And if you think about events like Dreamforce, those are filled with influencers. They just look quite a bit different than a uh, B2C company's influencer program would look like. So I think it's really about finding people that can speak to your industry really well that already have a lot of established credibility and partnering with them to essentially validate these stories that you're telling as a business um, through, you know, their unique point of view. Uh, really, I think LinkedIn is where, is where the majority of that success will come through, depending, of course, on the industry that you're in. Yeah, no, I think that's a, I think that's an excellent point because I mean, in every industry, there are people out there who are experts in the industry or who write about it or whatever it is. And if you go and find those people and they, and you can show that you're living your brand, um, I think that's mm -hmm. a, that's a fantastic way. That's a fantastic way to go. Um, what are some other, what are some other ways that you can, I mean, once you have an influencer or an ambassador set up and running, how do you, how do you manage to maintain that and keep it going and keep it fresh so that it doesn't get kind of stale? Yeah. So I think that auditing your program on a quarterly basis is critical. Um, back in the day, years ago, I was an influencer manager myself and it can be easy to say, Hey, I have these people that are consistently posting about me. Uh, things are working, things are running smoothly. I think you really have to challenge your own ideas of what success looks like and really be on the cutting edge of where conversations are happening. New platforms are popping up all the time. I'm sure you've heard TikTok is kind of really changing the game when it comes to things like influencer marketing and the content is just so wildly different from any content we've seen before across social platforms. So doing regular audits of where, where your uh, influencers, ambassadors, et cetera, are posting is critical. I also think it's really important to uh, have a healthy process for getting new people through the door. So you always want to find people that are excited about your brand. You don't want to just say, these are my 50 people. I'm working with them for a year and I'm putting my blinders up to everyone else. It's about you know making sure that you have consistent people coming through the door. Yeah, because let's face it. I mean, we live in a world today where, uh, you know, the popularity of one influencer and ambassador can wane, you know, can go up and then it can wane pretty quickly. So if you're not, uh, if you don't, if you don't have a conveyor belt of other people to bring into the mix, uh, it could work against you in the long run. 
Yeah, absolutely. And I think that uh, there are lots of different ways to set that up where it's not necessarily a bad thing to have mm -hmm. new people coming in and out. I think that that's where having different type of contract agreements or just a program that you're saying this program is three months, this program is six months. That way you are setting the expectation that there could be a new group of people coming to the door. Yeah, no, absolutely. Hey, listen, uh, Magda, this has been fantastic. Um, all of Magda's information will be in her contributor bio below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do. Yes, absolutely. So I am the Director of Marketing Strategy at Aspire IQ. We are a platform that allows brands to connect with anyone who is considered influential to them, whether that's social media stars, customers, fans, et cetera, and we give them the tools to find these people, manage those relationships, and analyze the results. And personally, what I focus on is um, helping our clients with their overarching strategy. So how are these programs going to feed into their broader business objectives, whether that's acquiring new customers, building that share of voice, uh, edging out competitors, whatever it may be. I've been with the company for about four years now and have worked with some incredible clients from massive enterprise brands to new up and coming startups. So it's been really, really great. Um, and if you want to learn more, we actually created a specific URL um, landing page for this podcast. So you can go to aspireiq.com slash sales dash pop. So excellent. That's, yep, backslash sales dash pop is where you can find all the information. Fantastic. And we'll have that link in the, in the bio below this as well. Listen, Magda, this is fantastic. And obviously, you know, as you said, TikTok is becoming very popular. So I presume you teach all your clients how to dance, TikTok dances. Is that right? Uh, of course. That's, that's my <laughs> primary function at Aspire IQ is teaching TikTok dances. Yeah. Yeah. Well, my 15 year old son always tells me that I have no, I have no business to be anywhere near TikTok. So. Oh, <laughs> that's not true. Tell him that the age range for TikTok has gone up quite a bit since the pandemic hit. I can imagine. Listen, Magda, this has been fantastic. Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine Pipeline of CRM. See you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you. Yeah.